Okay, welcome back, um, everyone. We will um, keep talking about patience and endurance. So I was saying that uh, in order for us to receive the promises of God, we need patience and we must also endure. So um, here are two words. Okay, so we said uh, uh, patience. I'll okay. I'll just write patience here. Patience. patience. Yeah. Okay. Patience, and um, the other one is endurance. So they are actually slightly different, slightly different in their uh, um, meaning. Patience is to, to um, how do you say, uh, like you calmly continue and you wait, right? So that is patience. We all understand that. Now, endurance means um, bearing up under pressure. So it's something like, um, uh, it, the other day we did the arm wrestle. Do you remember uh, arm wrestle? So uh, in that arm wrestle, think about the person who is losing. Okay, the one is experiencing a lot of pressure from the other person. So they are losing. But imagine that they don't give up. Whatever energy they have, even though they seem to be losing, they are putting all the energy to resist. Resist that other uh, stronger person. That is endurance. Endurance is where you put all your strength to uh, not give up. You may feel like you're losing, but still you're putting all your energy and you're pressing against the pressure that's coming at you. That is endurance. So we need both when we talk about faith and uh, um, you know fulfilling what God has in mind for us. So being patient is calmly, trustingly waiting on God, but endurance is to be bear up under pressure. And we all said that, you know, so, there are many reasons for delays. Uh, and um, most of the time, there is a season in which the fulfillment will come. So we have to wait for God's season. There is a, there is a time for every purpose. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 8 tell us that, right? There is a time for every purpose. So we have to wait for that correct time for the promise of God to be fulfilled. Now, uh, that waiting, we understand patience. So you wait for the right time and be patient. But let's talk about endurance. Endurance. Um, I know that the online students can't see very clearly, but you know, just uh, continue to follow along with me. Uh, can somebody read First Peter chapter eight? Um, First Peter chapter five, verse eight and verse nine. First Peter five verse eight and verse nine. Uh, first Peter chapter five verse eight. Be yes. sober, be uh, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Verse nine. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Okay, so Peter is saying that we have an enemy and that enemy, he's like a roaring lion, meaning he's waiting. Okay, roaring lion, uh, you can even imagine something like a hungry lion waiting to devour, waiting to defeat every believer. But verse 9, he says, resist him. What does he say? Abhishek, can you read that again? Verse 9, please. Ah. Resist him steadfast in the faith, yeah. knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Okay. Steadfast. Yeah, steadfast in the faith. faith. Okay. So, what um, Peter is saying is we need to be, we should resist. So, the devil will come. 
to attack us, stop us, but we must resist like that arm wrestle. Resist him steadfast in the faith. So with faith, we can endure. Don't give up on the devil because we will win if we don't give up. Sometimes the only thing that we have to do is um, be like, don't give up. Just be there. Be consistent. Okay. Uh, now, why do we need this? Why do we, uh, you know, really need this? Because there are going to be situations uh, where, you know, all kinds of things may happen and uh, endurance is required on our part. Now, endurance, when we talk about endurance, we need it under three circumstances. Under three circumstances. So what are these circumstances? One would be time. The second would be test. The third would be trials. Trials or you can even say tribulations. So enduring, st stand steadfast in the faith or endure in the face of time, test, trials. And all three are different. So that's what we need to understand because people keep asking the same questions again and again. Why is there a delay? Why is there a delay? Why am I going through all these difficulties? There are three reasons. One is time because it may not be God's time. As simple as that. We just have to wait for the right time. And it's going to take some patience. It's going to take some endurance uh, because you're waiting for the right time. And good examples will be Abraham. It took a long time. Uh, Caleb. Caleb, uh, when he had the promise of um, receiving that mountain, Moses promised him a mountain, right, in the promised land. But finally, when Caleb got that mountain, he was, the Bible says uh, that he was old. He must have been around 80 years old. So can you imagine a man who's waiting from the age of around 40 to the age of 80 to receive the piece of land which was promised to him. So it's about time. Sometimes it's just not the right time. And because of that, we may need to wait. The second that I said is test. There can be um, moments where God takes us through a test. Now we all know about Abraham's test when God said, uh, sacrifice Isaac, okay, the child of promise. Can you sacrifice him? One thing about the test of God is, we must remember, the test of God is not temptation. Okay, So there are again two words here. One is test, uh, the other or the opposite. The right way to put it is... So test is one thing. But another word is temptation. There is a very big difference between test and temptation. Now people get um, confused and they say God is tempting me. When we say God is testing me, okay, that may be acceptable. But we can never, never say that God is tempting me. Who tempts? Satan. What is temptation? Yeah, it's, it's um, like Satan tries to uh, induce us into sin. So temptation, what it does is, temptation will, will sort of draw you into sin. God never does that. God never does that. And Apostle James, in his book, he says that uh, God does not tempt us. We are tempted because of our own desires. Okay? So God doesn't want us to sin. He doesn't want us to sin and therefore God does not tempt. But the devil tempts. What does God do? Yes, there are times that God tests. Test is possible. Tests can come from God. But temptation can never come from God because temptation will lead us into sin. What will test lead us into?
yeah tests will lead us into uh, endurance strong character uh, i heard somebody say if god is taking us through a test that means uh, a promotion is coming so if there is a test think about a promotion if we clear the test you will be promoted okay uh, so by promotion we simply mean a stronger place in god uh, you know a uh, uh, a more firm place in god so we should not be afraid of tests because tests will only make us stronger so there is need for endurance when we go through tests in the case of abraham it was about isaac and uh, how did abraham perform in that test did he pass did he fail he passed because full of faith he trusted that even if isaac is going to die god is a god of resurrection he will raise him up so he cleared his test uh, and uh, you know god led him forward now the third um, situation in which we need endurance is trials trials and tribulations what are trials and tribulations trials and tribulations are um, the the problems that we go through in this world just because we are in this world uh, we may face lot of things okay um, like you know some sadness some disappointment uh, some discouragement some failures that's how life is uh, on the earth uh, so there are difficulties that we all encounter so trials tribulations tribulations are things that um uh, you know we we may find that there are people opposing us persecution opposition these are all things that happen so uh, here on the earth we are going to experience these things because of satan because of other people because of our circumstances now in these situations as well which are known as trials and tribulations we need endurance we need endurance and you know what um, apostle james he writes about these trials in uh, james chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 um, he says my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials so when we go through lot of problems difficulties he says be joyful be joyful knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience so when we respond correctly to um, these trials our faith gets tested and it produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing so uh, god again is working on our character and uh, our character is becoming stronger right uh, have you ever heard of um, the way they purify gold yeah so first of all uh, getting gold like you filter it out of the the soil the mud that's a that in itself is a very tough job but once you get the gold to get rid of the impurities one of the best ways in which they purify gold is they will raise the temperature have you heard about that so it is said that they will raise it to such a temperature such a degree that when the gold melts it will come to a place where um uh, you it will al almost reflect the like if you look at it it will be like a mirror it will reflect you to that extent they will melt it uh, and through that high temperature that gold will be purified so it's somewhat similar in our lives uh, does god tempt us does he want to hurt us does he want to destroy us no because this the devil comes to steal kill and destroy but god knows that all of us cannot escape these three things some point or the other we'll have to endure through time there will be tests that each one of us need to face there will be trials and tribulations but why does he let us go through it because that's when the purification happens it feels like you know we are under high pressure high heat and uh, why god why are you letting this happen but the bible says when you go through these trials when you go through these tests it says that the testing of your faith produces patience uh but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing so god wants our uh, character
to be strong our patience to be perfect look at uh, first peter chapter 1 verse 7 again it says that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of jesus christ so god is saying that he wants our faith to be like gold faith is more precious than gold uh, and god wants to make sure that our faith is pure gold right so we will go through these circumstances because it's just part of building us up we can tell god god can you can you just remove all these things all these difficulties but god says if you don't go through these tests trials then how will you become perfect there needs to be a work of perfection in us so uh, it cannot be removed right we have to go through that's the only way forward so these are all things that we must keep in mind as far as our uh, faith is concerned okay and uh, uh, like faith together with we said patience and faith together with endurance see in hebrews chapter 11 do you remember we went through all the mighty men and women of god we said abraham jacob isaac abel uh, david so we saw so many names they were all people who did something mighty for God. But towards the end of the passage, we saw some people who went through difficulties. But why are they in, the, um, in that passage about faith? Because they endured. They did not see victories like the other people, but they endured. Even when we endure, it gives God glory. So look at this. You have um, verse 33, verse 34 of, um, wait, we'll go below that. Verse 36 of Hebrews 11, uh, where it says, Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. So it's talking about people who were thrown in the prison, who were beaten. Now we can ask, how is it that you know this is faith and the result of faith but it says here how did they manage to survive through these difficulties because of their faith and god was happy about their endurance even though it doesn't say they escaped it doesn't say uh, they um, survived but god was still proud because they endured now verse 37 they were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. When we read about the times of, um, uh, you know, the book of Acts, uh, again, you will find that a lot of persecution was going on. You know, uh, Herod, uh, in fact, uh, I think Acts 12, he kills uh, James, uh, uh, James, the brother of John, and then he tries to kill Peter. So, so much of persecution was going on at that time. And then you wonder, uh, like, what about these people who did not survive or these people who, who struggled so much? Uh, see, even they had a life of faith. The reason they were able to go through the trials or Steve, Stephen, right, who was martyred, what do you say about all these people? They were also men and women of faith. They were able to endure because of faith. And God takes notice of it. So it's not just about our, uh, you know, a great outcome. Yes, there are times when we see all these wonderful outcomes. But uh, even in times where people have uh, faced trials, difficulties, endured, by faith, God takes notice of it. So, yeah, it's written about all those things. Verse 38 says, um, they wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. All of And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God, having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So God still took notice of these people and he was proud of them All right um yeah so that's a little bit about um uh, exercising faith with patience and endurance any any thoughts
anything to discuss about this? If so, we can. Um, otherwise, we just move to the next chapter. Hmm. Hmm. Peter telling Satan also is a lion. So how we can differentiate it? Roaring lion. Okay, uh, you're saying Peter calls Satan as a lion. Yeah, roaring lion. Roaring lion, and uh, the Bible also. Jesus. Can you come again? Jesus. Jesus is a, referring as a lion. Book of Mark. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. How can we differentiate? Differentiate. That? Okay, so you see, all this is prophetic language. Okay, so prophetic language where uh, we must interpret the image correctly. For example, uh, John the Baptist, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Who is he talking about? Jesus. Why is he calling him Lamb of God? Sacrifice. Because if you look at the, the temple practices, they were familiar with uh, sacrificing a lamb. They were familiar with offering the blood of the lamb, uh, you know, the sin offering. They were, they were familiar with a lot of things. Uh, and that is why when John saw Jesus, with that in mind, he says, behold, the lamb of God in that context. Got it? So that, that word or that picture of the lamb has to be interpreted correctly. So in the context of temple sacrifices and all, this is the perfect lamb of God, the Lord Jesus. He's going to die for us and bring us redemption. Now, same way, apply these, the lion. Okay. So when we say lion, the lion of Judah, what, what does it signify? It signifies Jesus as the ruler or the ruling king the reigning king. Okay, he's the ruler. Uh, uh, so that is the understanding. But if you look at Satan as the lion, now what is the context? You, sh you should look at all the, like um, the understanding of the Bible. What does the Bible say about Satan? Uh, he comes to steal, kill, destroy. He lies, he accuses, he deceives. Uh, so in that context, lion, Okay, in that context is somebody who destroys. Got it? Because the same animal, it rules, but it can also destroy. So, we must interpret it in its context and take the meaning in its context. So, it's okay to use the same imagery for two um, very opposite things. So, the picture of the lion can be, it is used for Jesus also but it is used for Satan also. So interpretation is important. You got it? Yeah, see, even when you, when you look at um, uh, dove, the bird, no? The dove. Uh, the Bible says, like when Jesus came, he was baptized, uh, like the dove descended on him. So the picture of the dove is a picture of the Holy Spirit in that context. So sometimes you may have seen people draw the dove to depict the Holy Spirit, um, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. But uh, Jesus said, you must, be, you must be wise as serpents, right? You must be wise as serpents. You should not be dumb or gullible as doves, okay? So there is a statement that he makes um, uh, about believers, and he says you should not be uh, so innocent or simple or dumb, like doves. Same dove, two meanings. One depicting the Holy Spirit, the other depicting foolishness. You got it? So, um, good question actually, uh, Nelson. So, this is about interpreting uh, prophetic uh, imagery. So, we should interpret it in its context. Otherwise, can you see, we can make such a big mistake. Yeah, so that's how it is. Sure. Right. Um, okay, so Sanjay says a devouring lion can also be a rogue lion that has separated from the pack. This lion kills 
not for food but for pleasure oh, okay i didn't know that uh, sanjay thanks for sharing that piece of information so yeah um anything more about endurance patience okay charles uh it seems like a question it says ma'am on the subject of endurance and patience how do we differentiate between a test and a satanic attack how do we differentiate hmm a test and a satanic attack okay so uh, um, brother charles what we can do is we can look at the nature of the um, uh, nature of the circumstance okay so usually you know whatever we talked here right so time is quite natural it it happens a uh, test is also somewhat positive okay we even through the test we have a sense of confidence that yes if i can make it through this test uh something good will will come out of this but the last category here trials and temptations so trials and tribulations generally satan works in this third category okay trials and tribulations uh so we we can uh, discern uh charles that's what i would say discern or that spiritual recognition we can have uh, that something is the devil or something is god it's hard to explain uh, uh, otherwise but also what helps us is when you understand how satan works so when we recognize how satan works um in the subject you have it in your next semester believers authority um uh, deliverance and demonology when we study about how demons work we will understand how exactly they function so with that in mind we can tell whether something is the devil like if you look at if you look at the uh, features of a demonic attack we can say that this is demonic right uh, but if you can't recognize it with the list of all the activities of satan uh, then you may you may uh, say that okay maybe it's just a test that i am going through okay i hope it answers your question but if you have follow up questions please do ask me uh yes yes okay hmm tribulations yeah okay correct so akhil is saying um tests will draw us closer to god when we go through them but trials and tribulations will take us away from god perfect yeah that's also um an answer okay uh, sister gertrude says um she's saying the the challenges that we face uh, which may be tests that will have the peace of god but uh, the ones that you know satan brings it uh, will it, it will have a sense of restlessness that's also true yeah sure so i think we have a fair understanding of uh, uh, you know patience endurance so we can go ahead to the next uh, subject here which has to do with determination determination uh, which undergirds faith okay so determination is um, having a never give up attitude and it is described with uh, so many english terms in our notes here there are words like tenacity or um, you know pressing in being relentless unwilling to give up or being stubborn obstinate in a in a positive way uh, being persistent being insistent so these are all words that we can use to describe determination so basically it is a 
uh, never give up attitude that one needs to have. So whenever we talk about faith, faith is connected to determination. You know, faith doesn't give up. True faith, genuine faith doesn't give up. It will hold on till we see the results. That's how it should be. From the New Testament, there are a couple of uh, instances which we have and we are going to look at it. Now, uh, what we will do is we will read all these passages. There are three passages. One is about the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, this is in Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. So one person can please read it. It's somewhat long, but you know, it will be helpful if we read it. Then another person can please read Matthew chapter 20, verses 29 to 34. Um, okay, who would like to read Mark 5? Let's, uh, okay, Nelson will read it. Great. Uh, Matthew 20, 29 to 34. Any volunteers? Abhishek. Okay, Abhishek will read it. Um, Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Maybe somebody online. I will I will read, sister. Yes, yes. Okay, sister Gertrude, you can read it. So uh, let's begin with uh, Nelson. Yeah. Mark chapter 5, 25 to 34. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he, he looked around to see who had done it. But the women, knowing what hap had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Okay, fine. Thank you, Nelson. So this is the incident where there is a woman who has the issue of blood for 12 years. So we let's think about uh, the situation that she's in. We could say that she must have been very weak, right? 12 years, she's uh, sick. So she's weak. Uh, she could have been poor because it says that she went to doctors, uh, nothing much happened, so she spent all her money. She must have been uh, weak financially also. Uh, can we say that she was discouraged? Sometimes when we try different things and it does not work, we feel discouraged, we feel disappointed. Maybe she had all those feelings, frustration, anger, we could say that, but one thing that she had uh, uh, as far as Jesus was concerned was faith in him uh, because she tells herself if only I can touch the uh, hem of his garment I can be made well so she had faith in Jesus uh, she also has a lot of courage so in the crowd imagine you know she has to push through the crowd because she has an intention I have to touch his clothes so she goes in all her weakness she touches and then uh, Jesus asks, who touched me? Maybe she got scared. Oh, what is going to happen now? Because I was the one who did it. Uh, but she has courage. Now uh, she comes and she tells Jesus what exactly happened. And he says, okay, daughter, it's your faith that has made you well. So Jesus was happy with her because uh, her faith was a determined faith. She, she uh, took it up upon herself and she 
touched Jesus's clothes. Now, so many other things could have happened. The way we saw in that theater uh, workshop, you can make a whole story of it, right? You can just paint the picture. Maybe her family said, don't go, this and that. So many things, but she was determined. All right, uh, so we saw her determination. Let's look at Matthew 20, verse 29 to 34. Matthew chapter 20, verse 29. Now as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. Verse 30, And behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Verse 31, Then the multitude warned them they, that they should be quiet, but they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Verse 32, So Jesus stood still and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? Verse 33. They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Verse 34. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Okay, praise God. So what do we see here? We see two blind men. Uh, they have heard that Jesus is close by. Okay, and they start crying out loudly, son of David, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Now, what are some of the challenges that they are facing? The crowd is uh, accusing them, the crowd is mocking them. Uh, so that can be a discouragement, right? When people say, uh, why are you crying so loudly? Keep quiet, you know, don't disturb Jesus. So people are opposing them. But they have faith that, oh, we should not let go of this chance. Jesus is here. Jesus will heal us. So they have faith in Jesus. One is the crowd. The crowd is stopping them. Second thing, think about Jesus. Jesus is asking them the question, what do you want? That's also a little bit discouraging because uh, Jesus can see that they are blind. And so desperately they are crying out. So obviously he can understand these blind men want to see. But Jesus is asking the question, what do you want? Now, if they were the kind who got angry with Jesus, what, what do you mean, Jesus? We are blind. Obviously, we want to see. That's what we want. In case they responded like that, I don't know whether they would have received the healing, but they had faith in Jesus. Jesus just wanted to know, what is it that you're expecting from me? Even though he knows, he's asking them. And they told him, Jesus, we want to be able to see. And then he heals them and immediately they were healed. Look at that determination. They did not let the people discourage them. They did not even let the, the method that Jesus used of asking them, what do you want? They didn't let that also discourage them. They were determined. Whatever it is, we want to be healed. Right? That was their faith. And because of their faith, they were healed. Now, let us look at the third passage here, Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. Uh, sister Gertrude, you can go. Yes, ahead. sister. Um, Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Then yes. Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent to except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, sister. So we see the uh, determination of a mother in this case. Okay. Her daughter is uh, oppressed 
and she wants deliverance for her daughter. She comes to Jesus. But what does she experience from Jesus? She experiences denial. It's almost like Jesus is saying, sorry, you know, go somewhere else. Don't ask me. Why? Because he's saying, I have come to the lost sheep of Israel. Meaning, uh, when Jesus was ministering on the earth, before he died on the cross, uh, he was ministering to the Jews because he had still not died on the cross. Right? Once he died on the cross, this blessing was open to all communities. That is why later on you see the disciples, they went, they preached to the Gentiles, they preached to the Greeks, they preached to, you know, people uh, going into all the world and make disciples. That was possible after the work of Jesus on the cross. But before the cross, you know, there is, there is uh, Jesus is functioning on the basis of covenant. He has a covenant with Abraham. And who are Abraham's people? The Jews. That's what Jesus is telling this woman. He's saying, woman, I have come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not for you, for them. You're outside the covenant, right? So I cannot, we cannot give the bread to the dogs. Can you imagine? She's so desperate. She wants her child to be healed because she knows that Jesus can set um, the child free. She goes begging to Jesus uh, and Jesus says, Sorry, one, you're outside the covenant. Second, uh, it's literally like he's saying the dogs. She could have gotten so angry with Jesus and said, you know, why are you calling, calling me dog? She could have said that. But what did she say? She said, but Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. Can you, can you just picture she's not ready to give up? She has an explanation. She says, Jesus, you say whatever you want. One thing I know, the healing which you have, which is the children's bread. That's what he said. Healing is the children's bread. It is for my people. But she says, you can still give me a piece of that, right? Even the dog can get a small crumb of that bread. What amazing faith she had. And Jesus, what did he say? Great is your faith. Okay, go. Your daughter will be fine. So Jesus made an exception. Even the covenant which was there, uh, this is actually historic, that Jesus says, because of a woman's faith, you take it. Miracle will go to you also. Even though you're not a Jew, she's a Canaanite woman. Matthew describes clearly, she's not Jewish. Still, Jesus said, okay, we'll bend the rule, you can take what you want because you're so determined. You can get it, right? So think about all these people. What are some, some common features that we see in them? They mm -hmm. all take the initiative. You know, sometimes faith will not sit quietly. When faith knows that Jesus is here, faith will do whatever it can do to reach out to Jesus, right? So initiative, we call that initiative, meaning you won't just sit back and relax. Ah, if God does, let him do. If he doesn't do, it's okay. It's not like that. You have to do it, Jesus. You have to do it for me. And so initiative is, you, it will get up. Faith will get up and do something. You got it? So initiative, determination uh, is associated with initiative. Then what else do we see? Against all odds. For all these people, there were too many challenges. Too many challenges. Uh, it feels like that woman with the issue of blood, for 12 years you're sick. How can you even think that you'll get healed now? Right? People can say that. The blind men, you're already blind. You're fully blind. How can you even imagine that you'll be able to see? Or the Canaanite woman. We could say that you're not at all in the covenant. Jesus won't listen to you. There are too many things which are standing against these people and their expectations. But they did not give up. They said, yeah, we know it's too difficult to get something from Jesus. But we can do it and he will do it for us. Um, okay. Excuse me. I will have to mute. Yes. Um, and the next thing that we see here is embarrassment. Embarrassment means, um, you know, 
you feel you feel shy you feel sh shame think about that woman with uh, the issue of blood in those days if you're a woman who's bleeding you can't go uh, in like you can't go and be with other people because you're considered you know you're not considered uh, well uh, but she took the risk it was embarrassing for her to even go what if people find out that you know you have this problem but you're you're out with the crowds she didn't care she said no i got to get the healing i won't be uh, so what if i feel shame i will still go after jesus so embarrassment was not a problem the the blind men people said keep quiet stop screaming like this but what did they do they didn't care they said no we want a miracle you say whatever you want but we need jesus to touch us so they didn't worry about shame or embarrassment they went ahead same thing with that woman jesus kind of put her down but she was not ashamed she said lord you call me dog you call me anything you give me the healing that's all i want it okay so she was not uh, she didn't act on the basis of embarrassment um and faith will not take determined faith will not take no for an answer even to jesus they didn't keep quiet right uh jesus is saying woman sorry knock the ne next door but even to jesus that woman is not leaving him he's saying no 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 jesus you have to do this you have to do this for my child okay so faith will not take no for an answer and uh faith presses in right it's like a uh, tenacious tenacious means <coughs> you know when you hold on to something and you hold on very very tight very very tight okay sometimes you have these little kids uh, you tell them okay don't take that don't uh, you can only touch this but they'll grab the wrong thing they won't leave it you literally have to remove their fingers from it because they're not ready to give it up that is tenacious tenacious is you're holding so tight that you will not let it go uh, so this is a feature of faith when we say that we have faith in god uh, we are trusting god faith has got to be determined faith it can't be light you know what i mean like yeah okay i have a grip on god but if he doesn't do it i'll just let it go that's not that's not faith at all so faith is tenacious faith is determined faith will not stop faith will not take no for an answer uh, so that's how it is so i'm just going to stop here if there's any points for discussion we can uh, talk and uh, we will close with a word of prayer anything about determination Okay, I think we all understand and we just need to pray and ask God to help us have this kind of strong faith, right? So uh, let's pray and close. Um, could someone help us pray these things that we have learned just now? Maybe somebody from the online batch? Okay, we'll have to be quick. Heavenly Father, we just wish to thank you once again for this uh, hour of study, Lord. We, we pray, Father, that whatever we have learned today, Lord, that you give us a deeper revelation of what we've learned and help us to apply it in our lives, Lord. Lord, we just pray that as we continue in this course, we'll grow from strength to strength in our faith, Father. And help us to be a blessing, Lord, in this life, Father. We pray for a blessing upon all the teachers and upon all the students, Lord. And help us uh, to be, uh, you know, committed and in this 
committed in this journey and to have a hunger for your word, Lord, as we continue. We ask all of this, Lord Jesus, in thy precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sanjay. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye for now.